Good morning. Good morning. My name is Sarah Gergelt and I work with the Living Archives Project where we are collecting stories of how COVID-19 impacted various communities mm -hmm. in Mecklenburg County. Yes, Today is May 15th, 2023 mm -hmm. and this week there were 24 reported cases of COVID-19 in the Charlotte Mecklenburg County area which actually shows a 57% decrease over the last two weeks. Mm. Therefore, each subject is comfortable not wearing a mask. Yes. George, would you introduce yourself? Um, my name is George. I'm George Hester. Um, I'm here <laughs> with Miss Sarah Gergel, and we're uh, interviewing the Living Archives. Um, I'm glad to be here this morning. I'm glad to be able to speak about it um, and how COVID-19 has affected me. So, thank you. Oh, thank you, George. Would you be able to introduce uh, or describe your physical appearance for us? Yes, I am 5'8", uh, about 180 pounds, African-American male. Yes. Okay, yeah, thank yeah. you so much, George. And then before we started, we did this activity together called a hand map. Is there anything from your hand map that you would like to share with us? Oh, yeah, definitely. I sure would. Yeah. Um, this is my personal hand map, and the exercise is you draw your hand. You know, it was my left hand that I drew because I'm right-handed. Um, I have father and son. Sorry to interrupt you. If you want people to see it, you're going to have to raise, oh, raise it. more. Sorry, guys. No, okay. <laughs> uh, I got father and son. I have teacher and I have trainer. I have an MC and also a husband. Technically, I've been a husband and now I am a fiance, so I know the both. Um, she asked, also asked to, for us to write three major sections of your life that affected you. And I wrote college, military, and incarceration, which is prison. These are my supporting roles in my life. I mean, my father and my mother. Um, these are my COVID-19 thoughts, things I think contributed to it when I hear it. I think social distance, lockdown, and collateral damage, especially the last one. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, and the things I've gained over the last years is an additional small business and a better family relationship. So okay. that's my exercise. Well, I hope they can see little, that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm excited to talk a little more deeply about it. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. So, George, tell me a little bit about yourself. How long have you lived in Charlotte? Um, I've lived in Charlotte the entirety of my life. I've uh, traveled all over the world, but Charlotte's always been home. Every time I get off a plane, a train, a boat, I'm like, let's go to North Carolina. Yeah. <laughs> let's get here. You're back home. So. You've lived here most of your life. Mm -hmm. And so you've been able to kind of see Charlotte go through a lot of different transitions. Yes, I have. Yeah. Like, it's totally different now. Charlotte used to be trees. And like we had one or two malls. <laughs> yeah. Okay. There was Carolina Place and Eastland Mall. That's okay. it. So all these other ones. Like North Lake was the first new one that we saw. Yeah. And like everything started getting torn down. Like I remember when it was tearing down Eastland. They it was shut down usually when the mall shuts down, shut it down in sections. So yeah. you start seeing the lights be off all day in one place and then it'll just get more and more. You're like, wait, this is <laughs> Oh yeah, East and Wine had the best frozen yogurt. That was we're gonna miss that. Me and my brother talk about that. We went to go and I see my theory was because I was like a kind of weird kid. I was a, <laughs> I have my own theories about everything. And they were like, well, the yogurt was so good because of the recipe. I was like, no, it was so good because it was over the ice skating rink. They knew what they were doing. <laughs> my mom was like, this guy, he's got his own theory. I was like, it's cold. Like it's makes sense. Yeah. Freezing that yogurt is delicious. <laughs> The vanilla yogurt. Yeah. So that was my memory of East of Charlotte back then. <laughs> yeah, the big sun on the mall, and then wow. that, yeah, we go. So we, we would run straight to the food court. <laughs> like we were like, ah, yeah. we get some food. Nope, we want to get under the yogurt like this. Yeah. <laughs> and sir, you paid for it. Do you want to cut? We'd be like, nope. <laughs> our hands in there, and you know, as kids, it was that's a good memory for me. So, that's awesome. but yeah, Charlotte has considerably gone. You know, dealing with the light rail and. Mm. Now they're trying to make it a metro. They're trying to branch it off. I took them 10 years, but <laughs> we waited a long time uh, for that to work. I yeah. hope it's contributing to everybody and helping everybody like it should, yeah. you know. So, but um, I know that the quarantine probably affected me the most and other people during the quarantine. I was an essential worker. So okay. I used to work for UPS long ago. Yeah. Okay. When it was all going down and uh, they still make you go. Yeah. And that was even like a sci-fi movie to me because everybody's like, don't touch people's hands and mm -hmm. keep your mask on and don't. And at UPS, we had the big thing and it was like a covering on the back and you would, that would get foggy. You can't see anything, you know. 
I was like, well, the dog is outside. I always think the dogs are never affected by any of this. They'll still be barking long after we're on. Yeah. So, yeah, but yeah, it changed. It, it, um, I think it pushed us apart as a nation because mm. I don't really believe in, you know, caste and separatism and labeling everybody and mm-hmm. doing all that. I just think we're the human race. You know, that's yeah. the only as Lord knows what else is out here. I always say, <laughs> Lord knows. And the movies they make, I see my son watch, I'm like, there's some truth behind <laughs> Somebody yeah. saw something. You know, so we need to cleave to each other in this time, uh, no matter the color, the race, the stance. I don't even like politics, you know, and I'm involved in local politics, but I would prefer it to be a different way. I prefer everybody to have a say. You know, every person that's going to represent to really have a say, like, really, everybody shut up. <laughs> listen to this woman who works at daycare and now we're gonna listen to this guy who works for the road crew you know now we're gonna let's just listen like <laughs> don't yeah. give him any jargon or anything oh we're gonna take that in because no no just hear what people are saying because mm. i know this thing affected more than just like it affected the world basically it shut us down mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. i haven't seen anything like that i don't think in my lifetime mm-hmm. unless it was like a natural disaster i saw like maybe one hurricane when I was a kid, that was Hurricane Hugo. Everybody was like, you slept through it. I just remember me and my brother, man, it was really dark. <laughs> he was like, why is it so dark? Why is it windy outside? And my older brother tried to go outside. My mom was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like, the wind is great out here. She was like, no, 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 no. You know, but this is when it was just the storm coming. Yeah. Um, apparently, the portion I slept through, me and him, we had partied all day and we were dancing around and um, we went to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> my mom was like, yeah, it came. And we were like, <laughs> You missed it. <laughs> you know what is this tornado? Ten minutes. Well, she was like, "Yeah, it came through and goes right back up. It's done." That's. Man. I was like, "That's astonishing." Well, you know. You guys are all okay. Oh yeah, it didn't tear up. We lived on a farm growing up, okay. um, so we went back and forth from my grandfather's farm. That thing was sturdy. It wasn't gonna tear that up. <laughs> yeah, it couldn't. It tore the taller things. Like maybe we had a large tree. It actually moved the tree. It didn't destroy it. it the tree was that heavy. I think the wind was like, I feel like the wind was like, oh, okay, we'll just set that down. I'm like, yeah, yeah cause that tree never, I remember lightning struck that tree in the front of our house. We thought it was dead for years. And then little trees like that were growing from the inside. I was like, nature's crazy. And then it finally grew back out of that because it was smaller at that time. And then that's when it grew into the giant tree. Like it, I was like, oh, it wasn't dead at all. It would use that as a like, shield like it was like all right well it started again i was like that should be for us through these times to keep moving and you know growing and uh, i know we may have to wear masks excuse me guys um probably soon again i feel like they're gonna Mm. kick that back up because that seems to be a narrative that they like to you know but i feel like covid19 is more of a piece of our society now like the flu or Mm. it's just like any virus you're not gonna get rid of it like what are you gonna do you gonna kick it out like (laughs) yeah get out of here like you can't they true. made they all the medicines they have for COVID are experimental mm-hmm. it takes the FDA like what five six years to clear it COVID will be like, well you know it'll, what do they say Omicron like now there's a new one mm-hmm. now they got the new breathing the respiratory problem RSV you know they're saying that's and I was like see you guys can't even keep up like it's just gonna keep evolving and changing and now when I'm out I see less like you said we say 57% yeah, I see way less, you know, because mm-hmm. our bodies, I think the human body is one of the strongest things. It'll be like, oh, I got it. Well, mm-hmm. we're just living with it now. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I didn't think it was going to cause because I think people panicked. Hey, this could be the end. I'm like, oh, no, I think it'll take a lot more because we're resilient. <laughs> like, we're, it's in the Black Plague. I was like, what we read about in history, we should even be here. <laughs> like, yeah. uh, meteors, we should be gone. But, mm-hmm. you know, the, the great one upstairs and the universe designs it for people like us to survive you know i guess we're here yeah you know so i hope that one day even through all this code the separation that's my biggest problem i'm like i hope we'll met find a way yeah you know because that separation only perpetuates everything that was going on already like that already kept us apart like you know the music and the beliefs and the politics and i just kept us separate and covid was i think some of these more you know i call more wicked folks way of they was like, oh, well, now you can't really be beside them because they're coughing. <laughs> like, you know, so now when you cough in the air for it, people are like. Yeah. Like, I know, me personally, I'll give experience about COVID. I actually had it, um, and I got it on a plane. And I heard the guy up there, and I told the lady, I was like, can we get him a mask? Because his cough was, like, very gurgly and wet. 
And he just did not eat <laughs> for like 10 minutes at a time. And I'm just like, is my help? He's mm-hmm. just going to stare at him like he, like he's an older man. I was like, so um, we get out of the plane and come to find out. Yeah, when I got back, they sent us an email. It's like, yeah, majority of second class is probably half. COVID-19, because that guy said, and I told you guys, that guy was coughing. I was like, you got to help people. And then apparently he had been hospitalized critically because he was looked to be in his 70s or 80s. Oh, yeah. I was like, y'all should have took him off the plane and helped him then. Like, I was sad because I never said ostracized. I'm like, get him some water or something. Because the cough was bad. And they're like, sir, put your seatbelt on, sir. I'm like, are you going to keep, you see him choking. Like, he can't breathe. He can't answer you. You know, but people... I think they disconnect when it's not them. You know, they're like, well, it's not me. So, like, well, it will be because germs. Yeah. Because <laughs> that's the COVID, what I've noticed. You can get the booster. You can get all that. It's going to come. Like, it'll, yeah. it'll, it's like the flu. We've been right under all that. Like, oh, I'm here. You know, but I think once our bodies have it, we're mm-hmm. a little more sustainable to it. Now, I advise people to get them, the vaccine and the booster. I don't say, I'm not, you know, for it or against it. I say there are risks and side effects of all medicines, you know, mm-hmm. but to be safer around your family and loved ones is always a good, you know, perception, always a good way to be, always a good action. So mm-hmm. I would tell, I would advise people to get it. I got, I got the first one. So, you know, I, I'm going to get the booster once I had, that was in my mind. Once I had it, I was like, you know what? I'm going to get the booster. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't want to get this again, but then. I noticed the people that kept getting, you know, the three and four boosters, some of my close family and friends, they kept getting it. And I was like, you know, I don't get it that much for me not to have all that. I was like, maybe it's, maybe it's our natural immune system. Mm-hmm. Or I, like I said, I think our bodies just adapt after a while. So, yeah, that's my personal, you know, thoughts about COVID as of right now and the mm-hmm. separation and stuff. Yeah. yeah. So. Tell me, George, tell me a little bit about how was your family impacted during these last few years? Mm, they were, uh, a few of them had it. Even my little boy had it. Yeah, he had it um, twice. So how um, many kids do you have? Um, now, I, with my fiance, we have four. Four? So yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, we have four kids. And are they, in terms of ages, are they younger? Oh, yeah, it's a freaking just... staircase. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, you got three, five, nine, and 14. Wow. Yeah, so they're okay. all... They just get and they the nine and the five are the ones. They're the yeah. they're the two they're boys. Um, there's an older boy and a younger girl, but the nine and the five, he, they the those are the I call them the riot squad. You yeah. gotta watch them too. Yeah. If they're gone and you see the other, then I was like, well, where's your brothers at? Where are they doing? Oh, they went upstairs. Oh no, let me get up there because yeah. then you come up there and my son he got probably got like a pot on his head and the other one's got a cape oh, and he's like, I'm gonna God. jump out the window. He's oh, like, I'm God. ready for you. <laughs> like, no, 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 no. Because that's me as a kid. It's funny. I'm like, because Jesus, me and my brother were the same way. Like we used to jump onto mattresses off of the roof. Yeah, that's oh what. Gosh. Now that is what my mom drew the line. Oh she my was gosh. the fury. I've never seen a woman that furious. Oh she was gosh. like, <laughs> like you could have killed yourself. And we had capes on there. And I was like, well, the capes. What is, she was like, they do nothing. Superman doesn't even oh need his cape. Gosh. She used to tell me that he doesn't need that. Like if he takes yeah. it off, he can still. I was like, but it's a cape. Yeah. Like you need it to fly. Yeah. To look like you're flying. So yeah, when I was little, that was wow. a thing. But yeah, my family, they've uh they um have navigated through it. Uh, I'm pretty sure most of all my family has had it now and uh we suffered a couple losses. But um, so um yeah, the grief I think the grief phase is I'm not gonna say it's over, but they are healing and you know, we laugh about the memories, you know. I always tell people yeah. when people go laugh about, you know, enjoy them while yeah. yeah, they were in there good. Don't, oh, yeah. he was sick when she, or he was sick. You know, just enjoy, you know, like, oh, yeah. let's keep from being sick now as much as we can, you know. So during the initial onset of COVID, when the pandemic and the, all the restrictions were happening, mm-hmm. how was it with the kids where they all had to stay at yeah, home, right? Yeah, everyone. Yep, everyone. How though. did that impact? Uh, well, um, my fiance works at home. Uh, so, and now I'm retired, so I uh, was with them. <laughs> She's like, hey, 
I'm closing the door. <laughs> You're on your own for the entire day. So it made me feel basically how your moms feel. <laughs> like, happy Mother's Day as well. They just yes. had, yes, to all mothers. Yes. And mothers and daughters and everybody, sons, happy Mother's Day. Um, but I felt it. I was like, oh, this is what you go through. They're just everywhere. The little one, she's the clean one. She's like, pick me up, dad. I'm so. And then the two boys are like, yeah, I want that. And the other one, you know, is 14. They're just like, yeah. <laughs> He's just like, He's like, why? I'm like, you could help me. You're old enough to help. He's like, they don't, they don't want me to help. They'll hurt me. I'm like, yeah, they hurt me. <laughs> like, they trying to hurt me. Yeah. <laughs> the little ones, but they were good about it. You know, um, we they were doing virtual learning, so we had set it up at home where they're like in school, so that kind of calmed everything down to know that they want to go to school, which I never knew, especially my nine year old. I was like, you want to go to school? He's like, yeah, I miss school. Yeah. I was at school, and then they just took me home. I'm here with you guys every day. I was like, yeah. So, and um, especially for the younger three, I let them watch some of the news, some of it, just okay. to see how COVID was. You know, they probably didn't perceive it, but um, the two little ones, my son, he was on it. He was like, oh man, we're never coming out of the house. He's like, I'm not going to go see my friends. I was like, it's nothing like this is forever, but the government makes it indefinite because they don't know. They don't want to tell. Well, they tell us they know sometimes, and they don't know. But you don't want to. I, I understand because working for the government, mass panic is real. Like you could be like, "Hey, the Loch Ness monsters over there. Why would you do that? <laughs> Ten thousand people right here, and then they just freak out, and then you just oh, can we just move away? It's just like, hey, stay back from the water. Why? Uh, just stay back from the water. You know, yeah. that's more. I felt like the approach was with COVID. They didn't want to scare people, but as it started, you know, the death tolls rising. I feel like it impacted us, especially our kids with the school thing. Like yeah. that's what I think that may have delayed them somewhat, but it also may have sharpened them as well because we're yeah. in a technological era. So where my kids sit around a the tablet, they're doing all type of access, and I'm like, you gotta no, no, mm-hmm. <laughs> like now give me the tablet, no, mm-hmm. you know. And YouTube is, I think YouTube has really capitalized on this. Yeah. Because they are now. I remember YouTube was Pink Fong. You know, my son, my nine year old was little. That's all he wanted was a little Pink Pink Fong. Yeah. Now they got freaking. What's he watching? He loves this thing he wants to watch. I won't let him watch. It's called Chainsaw Man. I was like, you can't watch this guy. <laughs> He's freaking nuts. And so the night me and my brother used to watch, my stepdad would try to show, he wouldn't let us watch it. <laughs> He's like, that is anime. You shouldn't be watching that until you're like 14. Yeah. And then you watch it and you realize, like, y'all gonna have nightmares. The yeah. guy's head was a chain. Oh, yeah. I was like, this is why I won't show you that. See? Like, you know, that's your kids are crazy. And But I will say their resilience is different. Like, my son, the youngest ones are not. Some things just don't phase them. Like, like uh, we'll talk about ghosts. And my, 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 the five-year-old, he's like, oh, that's not real. A ghost. I'm like, it could be. You don't know. He's like, well, you don't know. So he's like, how is it real? I'm just like, I wasn't that kind of kid. Well, as soon as somebody said ghost, we were like, it's here. I can feel it. I can see it in the room. Yeah. You know, the kids now, they're not bought easily. They're like, uh-uh. Yeah. No. Yeah. Mommy says, no. You just talking crazy? Like, no. So, yeah, I think they were uh, half and half affected by mm-hmm. good and bad. You know, mm-hmm. yeah, it was a delay, but it's also they got jump start into this future because now all schools have laptops and all. Mm-hmm. And I think in 2019, I don't think they did. Like, I don't remember... I don't think so. A lot of schools are still textbooks, you know. I think when it got to be, they were sending the children home, you know, more and more because I it gradually, at least where I, where we were at, I think I saw it gradually. I saw kids come home and like one of them two would be sick or three or four would be sick, and then they sent us this letter and was like, "Oh, nobody's coming back to school." Because mm-hmm. we figured out like three or four met COVID nineteen, and it's spreading, so we're just sending everybody home. Yeah, so. Mm-hmm. That's, yeah, with the children. I feel like that was the, yeah. Big thing. Yeah, 50-50. So I know you mentioned that you um, were in the military. Yeah, So yes. what, what are your thoughts? I know you probably weren't in the military during COVID. No, no, no. I was long, long retired. Yeah, long. Well, 2013, you, I left, yeah. Yeah, do you still have... You know, friends or oh, yeah. connections. Oh, yeah. Of we talk all others. the time. And how, like, how did you see their experience? Ah, they were, they always call me like, you're lucky. <laughs> like, you're lucky. Because we're out here, like, mobilizing for a germ. Like, we're out here, like, yeah. going to fight a germ. Like, they're literally putting tanks together right now. This, what are we going to do? And, you know, one of our friends is like, what are we going to do? We're going to take all these guns and do shoot the germ. <laughs> He's like, this isn't a movie. Like, this is. 
And it's like the flu. Remember the flu epidemic and they have swine flu, bird flu, and all that. I said it's in, it's the, these viruses they come, and I feel like it's like. Maybe I think before the time of man, like during the time of dinosaurs, so this is how it went. Like when all everybody got sick and then new stuff grows and then new things come and then, you know, it's almost like a reset, you know. But mm-hmm. I feel like with the human bodies, I was like, I feel like we're so special because like we don't, we're resilient. Like it'll keep, you're sick, but you're going to live. Like, and that's it. I think that's what people missed, you know, and I think the separation built up a tension. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, but I saw in the military, like, uh, a little different in the civilian world, more hectic, you know, more mm-hmm. frantic. Like, they're always running around, getting orders this day to lock down this place, getting orders that day. Or at this time, um, it was 2019, Ukraine stuff hadn't started yet. So um, I don't think anybody was going anywhere. Not that I can remember. Uh, mm-hmm. I think they were going with Korea forever. So I don't know when that's going to I don't know if they were actually leaving to do that. But those are our most recent. Yeah interactions you know and i'll be like i don't know how it's gonna turn out but this this covid i knew it was gonna put some tension on yeah. the moving and the process of it because that's a machine the military and the government there's a machine yeah and one little freaking what is it remember we had the bikes and you take the stick i used to ask my brother i was like he's going fast he freaking throw some water on me i'm like well i got Mm-hmm. <laughs> fit you mm-hmm. and just crash out of control mm-hmm. um, but yeah that's how I feel like COVID was that stick like they just threw it and everything just toppled over yeah mm-hmm. nobody was able to prepare in time I don't think any of us really got time they were just like stay home yeah, yeah at least certain most people got paid you know yeah I know there was a good number of layoffs I saw especially um, during the, the I, said, I call it the essential working time Mm-hmm. When I was working on part time EPS, they was that that the layoffs were serious. Yeah, people yeah. couldn't come to work for months, you know, because mm-hmm. then think about your under underlying excuse me medical conditions, and then you get COVID, and it just as they say, it just makes it. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I just prayed for everybody. I was like, I pray we all make it back through this and sitting at Chick-fil-A on Saturday because they're closed on Sunday. (laughs) That's what I want. Yeah. Yeah, so that's it, yeah. yeah. I also know that you mentioned that you were formerly incarcerated. Yes, yes, yeah. Do you still keep in contact with anyone from there? No. (laughs) That's so hard. It is just so hard. That's... You gotta... You still... I mean, because now it's insane. Uh, have a nephew who was in the same situation. They got flat screens and stuff in there. I was like, he got the spoiled. I was like, it was wow. a dungeon when I was there. It was a freaking phone that they wheeled down this little hallway for you. And you're like, oh, like, like, give me the phone. I was like, yeah, so you guys, tech, they, they are being, I, I see, I'm not against it for prison reform. I don't like anything that imprisons people because people shouldn't have to go through that. Mm. Um, there are ways to handle people. Um, let's see, but in our society, some, I'm not saying it's necessary, but there are some bad people, you know, we know, mm-hmm. you know, we've seen the mass shootings is a big, now that's the narrative in the news right now. Yeah. COVID even is not in the news anymore. It's the man. I'm like, they are trying to make the news every single freaking day with that. Like, you know, ever since the Batman movie, I've just been bothered. Yeah. I was I like, can imagine, as a father, I can imagine how, what, what does that make you feel like? Um, I feel for all of us. Like, I'm like, even if you don't have kids, you're just out. You guys are walking in here and somebody just decides to do that. I was like, life can't be that bad, man. You're not out on the street with these guys with open holes in your shoes. Life can't be that bad, mm-hmm. you know, because I've even been homeless for a portion, you know, but I tell you, I still in my mind, I just, my mind would not let me say life is that bad. It's not like it's not. There's a guy who's homeless right didn't have any appendages. Like, he don't have any arms or legs. Mm-hmm. And he's sitting there and people just walking by like, no, no, I don't want any, you know. And I'm like, it makes you look at life there. You're like, oh, man. Because, you know, there's guys in there in the prison system who can't read or write, you know. They knew what to do, not what they were doing, but they can't read or write, you know. So they not, this is a a capsule for them. They're going to keep them there. Mm-hmm. And he can't read the let the lawyer's paperwork, so they're sending him stuff about his case. Mm-hmm. He can't read the judge's demands, you know. So he's like, mm-hmm. and they're like, you're just you're you're a disgrace, and you're not cooperating. And no, he's just confused. Mm-hmm. It's a place where they're not teaching him, you know. When I went to my end portion of being incarcerated, um, they uh, 
see me to school and stuff. And uh, I finished that school in like two days. Mm. They were like, you must go to school. Because this is usually for people who don't. I was like, well, I went to college. Yeah. This yeah. is news. I was like, you didn't even need this. What are you doing here? Yeah. I was like, well, you can't help. I said, well, in the first instance, you can't. It'll sweep in anybody. Yeah. If you get caught in that light at that time, it's not about yeah. color. I tell you, there is police brutality, but it's not the reason why they have a tense job. You know, their job's horrible. Yeah. I can imagine. You know, and see somebody you know, like, and you have to play that role because that's the. It's similar to the military. We always the police and the army and the firefighter. We always talk. You know and how similar. It's like an yeah. ant colony to me because it's only one motive, and they want that to be. You know, and I applaud the police and firefighter. That's a constant job here. Yeah. You know, I was like military. We get time off. I was like, you know, Andre Robert Lee, snipers, divers. They get time off. Yes. Yeah. They actually get the most time off because their job at the point they're going to do it is probably the most tense. Yeah. So where they have three or four days that are the most tense, they got 361 days where they're just we with your family because that next time you have to do that, they're accounting for that to be your last, you know. So, yeah. but so I say for the police and the firefighters and the medics to go out and do that daily, it's like they don't even know. Like we had a more, that's a schedule that you're on in the army. I was like, they don't even have a. It's whoever calls. Like, hey, I need help, you know, so I can imagine the the tension in that job. So, yeah. But, um, you know, incarceration, I tell people, it's not for anyone, I believe. I think it's a waste of time. I think everybody should play it by the book. Don't try to be gangster, drug dealer. That's not what matters in this world is real estate. It's like land and, like, things like this, preservation, you know, because all this stuff we're doing capitally they'll be gone there'll be a whole new system so as you can see the world almost got swept up by bitcoin during covid bitcoin was the thing like that was mm -hmm. that's what got me actually i was a, a day trader for a while but that's a hectic mm -hmm. <sighs> i can't lose money every day <laughs> like i was like all right calm down we just got it why are we losing it they're like well you reinvested the market i was like well the market is like a shark, it just turns, mm -hmm. <laughs> it goes wherever. I don't think it's just swimming with the current. You know, it's not a man doesn't control it, uh, some underlying force. I tell you, I don't like stuff like that. That's too sporadic. Yeah. It'll change. And then you're like, oh, bro. <laughs> like your whole company, all nine of your companies. Are, and you're just like, oh, get out while it's good. <laughs> I'll see you guys next time, next life, because I probably won't do that again. <laughs> But yeah, so that's mm -hmm. it. Yeah, that's the incarceration experience. It wasn't, I don't believe it's for anybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think. And uh, I believe like I'm how the government is doing now, Democrat or Republican. I don't identify as either. I uh, I believe they were pushing right to be, you know, releasing people with the minor charges and they're not as severe, you know, because the county of Mecklenburg were doing that for a while since mm -hmm. since Obama started doing that and they continued to. Well, the release of people with like traffic charges or the old drunk guy from outside. Like, what is he doing in there, man? Mm -hmm. When there's like 10 murderers out here that are not arrested. I always tell the police, especially when they harass people, I say, you know, you could be like, you're our line of defense. Like, that's because if we have to do it, then you're going to expect something different, you know, then, then we're going to be in trouble. And then it just escalates in other situations. So you have to be like bothering this woman at the bothering Sarah to take a stop. <laughs> like there's probably a guy up there hurting somebody I know it I was like because now our world is housed you know so it's housed there you never know what's going on yeah you know true. and I watch a bunch of crazy movies so I'm like <laughs> think yeah. somebody's in a bed help you're yeah. like hey, is that a person down there yeah. so yeah so you also did mention about police brutality and you know over the last few years you know we have the situation like George Floyd, yeah, yeah, the protests, yeah, I guess you know, my community, our, yeah, our yeah. black community. Um, it could be different, I tell them, because yeah. what's gonna happen, I you know, because I work for the government, aeronautics, drones, all that. What's gonna happen is they're gonna replace working people with mm -hmm. sentinels, they always that's the next. I say the people who are in charge of these corporations, that's what they want. Like, you know, the people who manufacture robotics, they would rather remove us out of the workforce, mm -hmm. you know, because he's making an emotionless workforce because you won't have anybody to, I'm not talking any Terminator stuff, but if they can have a robot nurse <laughs> ride around and take all the curse outs from the patients, they would, yes. Because it's some of them downtown, it's CMC, where they have the one that goes through and monitors everybody's vitals at night, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm... uh 
I think if we continue on that, I think that's just a contention thing. You know, I think that's where two groups of people, we have to sit down and really reach an agreement for it to stop. Like, this has to end. Like, that can't go because then it's going to breed resentment from the black community to the police. You'll never get a cooperation now for that. Mm -hmm. You know, even from the 60s and 50s and, you know, stuff my granddad would explain to me. And I'm like, it just won't stop. Like, and it's, I feel like it's a few. I feel like it's a few of bad apples that spoil a whole bunch, you know. Mm -hmm. That's always the case, you know, even with Democrats or Republicans or gays or straights, anybody. It can be mm -hmm. just one guy that's like, oh, I hate everything. You know, and then now the on the other side only heard him. Mm -hmm. well, he's sitting with them, so we hate them. And they're like, well, we don't hate anybody. <laughs> like, what happened? And that guy took off. That's always a guy who takes off. In the military, they say, um, you know, the sugar honey I see rolls downhill. And that's what that means. That one guy, he's always out of here. You know, he's always the, the catalyst will always be gone. And then people are left, like I tell people with adult decisions to make. You know, you really have to sit back sometimes and be like, Okay, what I'm doing isn't right, mm -hmm. you know. And when I was in the service, I did that a lot. So, but I feel like police brutality, uh, it's at its current state and still has not wavered. You know, mm -hmm. I wish it would. I don't know how we're gonna reach an agreement on that unless I feel like I just start paying them not to do it. <laughs> like you know, it's sad that that comes to that in America, but it seems like mm -hmm. you know there's not gonna be a change. You know, because it's. Daily we wake up and there's another black kid, black somebody, or somebody get choked out. And I'm just like, why? Like, what's going on? Like, that one guy got beat up by, it was a bunch of different guys. I tell people, it's not always white and black, because they're like, oh, it's white, it's oppressed. Now I'm like, that's not the narrative anymore. Mm -hmm. It's a group of wicked people sometimes. I feel like it's something, me, I'm spiritual, so I'm like, that's a spirit that gets on people. Mm -hmm. And they just see blood, and I don't know. Like, <laughs> it just is, mm -hmm. then they touch somebody else, and then they're all doing it, you know? Mm -hmm. And then now you have this guy here stomped to death, like, by a bunch of different people. I was like, because wickedness has no color. Like, it doesn't, mm -hmm. it jumps on who it can jump on, you know? When we go to McDonald's and be like, oh, yeah, I would like a number three. Oh, I don't want that. Just, why do I got to get that for you? And now you're mad because she just sent her energy through the intercom. There is an end. Or something. Oh. Yeah. He was playing a ride. He was like, yeah. Oh, that yeah, I don't know. Well, that's, that's been happening lately. I oh, see no. bugs out in the <laughs> seal room. Well, how did you get in here? Yeah. This isn't that close. <laughs> Yeah, so no, no problem. I don't do bugs. Don't and know. no, me either. <laughs> like, there you so, go. Yeah, on your way. So another um, question: When we were doing that activity together, is you mentioned some things that you gained over the last ah, yeah, few years. Yeah, yeah. Tell um, me about that. Uh, in addition to small business, well, me and my fiance have a photography business now. Awesome. Yeah, so, so if you guys ever need us, uh, it's called My Jazzy Photos. My Jazzy yeah, Photos. Yeah, we'd be happy cool. to what work kind with of them. Um, weddings. Um, we've done business shoots for like a whole entire flu like hundred people who need headshots for the cool. the ID cards. Yeah, and they just called us and we came and set up and did it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we done wet weddings a lot. Yeah, <laughs> weddings and baby showers. She's on that kick. She's like babies. <laughs> like they're so beautiful. It does. Everybody loves babies. That's the one thing. When I used to work uh, at Philip Mars, that's I was a media marketing rep, and that's more recent. That's what they say. Everybody loves. Puppies and babies. Yeah. They was like, babies first, puppies second. They was like, put that up there, <laughs> we'll win every time. Yeah. So, but yeah, um, yeah, I gained awesome. a small business, yep. How's and, that going for uh, you? Good, good, good. We good. get booked pretty often. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. That's I huge. enjoy it. Yeah, and I enjoy it. Is it recent? Mm-hmm. That's amazing. Yeah, um, well, we've been in a business for like a year or so. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So no COVID strikes, no nothing. That's great. Yeah, that's what I said. I was like, let me clear that past the... Past that. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, a better family relationship was my yeah. other one. Yeah, I'm, you know, just trying to, you know, you get older, you be the man and woman, and, you know, now your parents are getting older, so now you're the babysitter and the picker-upper, and uh, it's just funny to see it now, you know. You uh, yeah, them. my little nieces yes. and nephews, yeah, they're freaking teenagers now, yeah. so boys and girls, and I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> like, just do your schoolwork. Yeah. Like, just do your schoolwork. Um, but they're, everybody's doing good, and that, that's yeah. another thing. Yeah, I'm so. so glad to hear that, George. Yeah. To honor and respect your time, um, I guess I'll follow up with one last question. Is, okay. Are there any stories or experiences or anything else that you would like to share with us before we finish? Um, I'll say this. I always tell people I've never been outside the, the planet or the hemisphere or stratosphere, but I feel like 
this planet we're on is one of a kind. Like, I feel like it's not going to be anywhere else as loving, as open, you know, as with open with thought. Mm-hmm. You know, because the places I've been on the planet can be very harsh underwater in the the desert. You know what I'm saying? I was like, if this is like this and we're looking at these other places through a telescope and like mm-hmm. through a lens and all you see is like like Mars, just red. You know, I was like, well, how will we live there? Like, how will we even make what we have here there? Mm-hmm. You know, Earth is to me is irreplaceable. Our nation mm-hmm. The world, the people, it would never be the same, you know. Mm-hmm. I feel like we should all really cherish this. I learned that from like traveling around the world, and uh, my grandfather was also a big people person. Mm-hmm. He's like, even as wicked as they can be, someone could hit a 360 and come on back and just be like, you know what, that was wrong, you know. So try to give people at least a chance, mm-hmm. you know. So that's about it. Thank yeah. you, George. Thank you so much for sharing your story with us. We appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you, sir.